Greetings to all citizens of Good Game Republic. Whether you hate it or not, cheating will always be a part of multiplayer games. No matter how good the game's anti-cheat engine is, people will always find a way to gain an advantage over other players. Wall hacking, aimbot, scripting, boosting, and game fixing are just some kinds of blatant cheats some people will do to get ahead in the competition. <laughs> We all know cheating is bad, but it's even worse if you're a pro gamer. Today you will learn about the most famous cheaters in esports. Without regrets, let's get started. Aloha Dance and No One Virtus Pro and Adfinum fought for the grand finals of the Summit 2015 qualifier. The qualifying team will travel to Los Angeles for the Summit 5. During Game 3 of this series, Virtus Pro carry Aloha Dance lost his internet connection, causing the other Virtus Pro players to pause the game. At the end of the 10 minute pause rule, VP asked for extra two. They said that Aloha Dance had gone to an internet cafe to play. Adfinum kindly used their reserved pause time to help Virtus Pro, but after 20 minutes of waiting, the carry did not come back. They resumed the game, and Adfinum took Game 3. At the start of Game 4, Virtus Pro claimed that Aloha Dance's internet is back and ready to play again. Aloha Dance even tweeted, Now my internet works. VP then would take the remaining game to win the qualifier. However, viewers quickly noticed how different Aloha Dance played after he came back. They noticed uncharacteristic item builds and different item slots, like the TP scroll. Aloha usually places his TP scrolls on the C button. However, during Game 4 and 5, viewers noticed that he placed it on the B button. This made a strong case that maybe the player who came back was not Aloha Dance. And on the next day, Virtus Pro tweeted that they are withdrawing from the Summit 2015. Virtus Pro admitted that they cheated and broke the tournament's rules. They revealed that the player who came back was not Aloha Dance. It was Vega Squadron's carry, no one. Both teams released statements with regrets to fans and assurances that culprits were punished. Forsaken Nikhil Forsaken Kumawat was a professional player from India who had been competing in various CSGO events for several years before he was caught cheating at the Extremes Land Asia Finals in 2018. During the tournament, Forsaken's team Optic India was playing against Revolution VN team when he was caught using an aimbot by the tournament admins. The officials immediately stopped the game and investigated Forsaken's computer, where they found evidence of cheating software running in the background named Word.exe. Forsaken thought that it wouldn't be suspicious. Moreover, he tried to delete files from the PC when the admin was investigating it. The cheating scandal sparked immediate outrage among the CSGO community, with many fans and players expressing their disgust at Forsaken's actions. The incident also led to swift consequences for Forsaken and his team, as Optic India was immediately disqualified from the tournament and later Optic closed India's department in the bud. Word.exe scandal killed India esports scene in CSGO. Forsaken was banned from all events organized by ESIC for five years and got VAC from Valve. Les Crotons for those unfamiliar with the term, radar hacks are a type of cheat that allow players to see the positions of all other players on the map, giving them a significant advantage in matches. The use of radar hacks is a clear violation of the game's terms of service, and PUBG Corp has been cracking down hard on cheaters in recent months. The bans were handed down after an investigation by PUBG Corp into reports of suspicious activity during matches. The evidence against the accused players was overwhelming. After discovering this cheat, a total of 10 PUBG pros were banned for using the software in tournaments. Many of them were little known, but not THZ and Damien7. They were members of the French esports team Les Crotons, which won Broadcaster Royale Land Tournament for Duos with a $300,000 prize pool. The news of the bans sent shockwaves through the competitive PUBG scene. Some fans were shocked to learn that some of their favorite players had been cheating, while others were relieved to see action taken against those who were breaking the rules. Atun 
Juan Atun Ochoa, a professional player from Peru, was caught cheating during the TI-8 South America qualifiers in 2018. Atun was a member of the Thunder Predator team, which was considered one of the top teams in South America at the time. During the qualifiers, the team was competing for a spot in the prestigious tournament, the International, with tens of millions of dollars in the prize pool. When Thunder Predator faced SG Esports in the upper bracket final, everybody was in awe when Atun dominated with his Meepo in Game 3. Some viewers noticed some questionable plays. When all Meepos used his skill, poof, you have to input the click to each of them. This will make them teleport to the main Meepo. Doing this requires a lot of practice and skill. However, when Atun plays the hero, you can notice that when he poofed his Meepos, all Meepos teleported exactly simultaneously. And that's impossible. When asked about this, Atun said that he is using a macro key, a special programmable key on his mouse, causing his Meepos to poof exactly at the same time. After investigation, Valve made a release. Thunder Predator had been disqualified for the usage of macros. Pain Gaming would replace them in upper bracket final, but Atun didn't get any ban. He continued his career and even qualified for the Chongqing Major with TA and MDL Chengdu Major with Team Unknown. The last time he appeared in the headlines was April 2022, when he became a coach of Dreamers Esports. After a month in a new role, he was kicked from the team. And before we move to the origin of Kukli style, consider the possibility to support us financially via PayPal or Patreon. You will find all the details in the description down below. Kukli Hovik Kukli Tovmassian was a French CSGO player who was caught using an aimbot in November of 2014. Kukli was playing for the team Titan at the time and was considered one of the best players in the world. However, his cheating was quickly discovered and he was banned from competitive play by Valve. Is he, is he cheating seriously? Okay, okay, okay. What the hell is that? Come on. What the f is that? Is it like about the new shit in the mouse? Or yeah, yeah. I have no idea, man. Well, if he's cheating... Good job, Valve. Kukli's ban led to the disbandment of Titan right before the DreamHack Major Winter 2014. As Kukli explained himself, at the end of August 2014, the developer of cheating programs with the nickname SuperX0 contacted him and offered to try a special utility. He said that many players used this cheat, and that's why Kukli was interested immediately. Hovik tested the 7-day version of the hacker program in public matchmaking, after which he deleted it. Many other e-athletes doubted Kukli's honesty. Fixio, the former member of Epsilon, was 100% sure that Kukli cheated in 2013. I can say that I am 100% sure he had been cheating in all tournaments since Gamers Assembly 2013. I think he had an aim key with a bind on his mouse. He is trying to minimize his action. It is sad. When GMX and I saw the news about Kukli's VAC ban, it was not a surprise for me. I knew he had been cheating for almost two years, and some other players had suspicions about it too. After such statements, people even believed that LDLC reached the semifinal of ESL 1 Cologne 2014 largely thanks to Kukli's cheating. The legendary Kukli style moment when the French killed Pasha Biceps with a jump shot in the 30th round of the first map of quarterfinals between LDLC and VP became very suspicious. 1v1, Kelly against Pasha, the two players who stepped up phenomenally for their side. The situation with Kukli forced the tournament organizers to significantly increase the protection against the use of cheats. Players' devices began to be checked. Judges began to appear more and more often at the championships. Esports would probably have to come to such measures sooner or later, but it was the Kukli ban that accelerated the process. After getting a permanent ban, Kukli promised that he would not quit CS, but would broadcast more often on Twitch and play for fun. The Frenchman really tried to become a streamer, but he never managed to achieve much popularity. 
Now his channel has over 100,000 subscribers. In May 2017, he came back on esports scene as a vexed gaming member, but the highest place in HLTV rating after Kukli joined the team, 69. Kukli didn't manage to achieve anything big after his return, but many professional players supported his comeback. Pasha Biceps generally asked the Face It administrators to give the banned player an invite to the FPL, but they didn't. If you listen me, everyone, admins, NBK, Tass, all of, get right, invite Kukri to FPL, brothers. He was pro, he make mistake, but he deserved playing FPL, brother. Give him chance, give him chance. In June 2018, Kukli founded a new esports team, EFROG, but they usually finished at the bottom of the table of the ESEA Advanced Division. After he failed several times in esports, Kukli decided to move to the US, where he found the job of his dream, connected with sports cars. Enough cheaters for us. What case did we miss? Write about it in the comments. Before you go to investigate your opponents and matchmaking for suspicious moves, don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell. See you in a week.